Welcome to a special at home edition of Trigger King Tech. My name is Jeremy Mark, aka the Taurus Guy or Taurus RC Monster Truck Racing on Facebook if you'd like to follow along. Today we'll be discussing the Sport Modified class and more specifically the Axial SMT10 and SMT10 base trucks running aftermarket chassis. The trucks in front of you are my Buffalo Tremor 3, which is the 1992 version of the truck running a J Concepts 1988 Chevy single cab body and my Taurus 3 Honeycomb version which ran in 1988 and 1989 using a J Concepts 1988 Chevy Snoop Nose body. The Buffalo Tremor is mostly paint except for the headlights and a few sponsor decals whereas the Taurus is about half paint and then all of the Taurus decals and bulls and the grill on the front, which is a GMC grill, were made by my sponsor JB Scale Graphics. Both trucks use J Concepts Renegades tires on tribute wheels. The Buffalo Tremor has J Concepts bead locks, whereas Taurus has honeycomb wheel discs, which were made by Ross Hinshaw at RH Designs. With the bodies off, it's a little easier to see how these two trucks are similar and different. Both of them started out at Axial SMT10s and run AR60 axles and SMT10 transmissions. Both of them also run RH Design short wheelbase links. This truck has 12.9 inch wheelbase links and these are the same links but with longer Traxxas rod ends I've extended it to 13 and a half inch wheelbase. I changed the wheelbase to fit the different bodies more proportionally. In addition, some upgrades are the RH Design sway bars on this side, which are machined aluminum, and they're a little stiffer than the stock sway bars, which can be beneficial in our case with the higher speeds we're going into corners. It also has the RH Design's wheelie bar right here, which is great if you want to ride wheelies. These actually roll, or if you have a hard impact right onto the wheelie bar, it'll protect your body and your plastic cage right here from collapsing or being damaged. Um, additionally, I lowered the shocks from, well, raised the shocks from this hole to this hole, which lowers the stance of the truck a half inch. This improves the center of gravity. And to accommodate that, I've trimmed out right here and right here on the cage so that there's more clearance for the axles to move up. So this can go all the way up to here instead of hitting about right here where the plastic used to be. On the Havoc chassis, in addition to the longer wheelbase, it has Proline PowerStroke XT shocks. I've changed the springs. This truck runs 25 weight oil and Team Associated 1.9 long springs along with the included green or yellow short springs. Just because the shocks were originally made for a heavier Yeti, it's about a pound or two pounds heavier, and the springs were just too stiff for the weight of these trucks, which is about seven and a half pounds. This truck has 30 weight oil and axial red springs in it, and the three hole pistons instead of the two hole pistons which are included on the RTR or Builder's Kit parts tree. It just helps soften the shocks a little bit so they absorb the landings a little nicer and move the fluid a little easier with more holes to go through. Um, what's nice about this Havoc chassis, you'll notice all these extra holes. Instead of three holes here or three holes here to mount your shocks, there are nine holes here and 18 holes here depending on if you want to do link mounted or axle mounted shocks. Additionally, instead of the sway bars here and here, or here and here, there are three different holes here, and then there are holes here, and then here on some of the versions to move your sway bars in even further. Another advantage is you can move the weight in your truck around a little bit. With the SMT10, your battery comes right here, your electronics go right here. Some people modify it to move the battery up and center the weight, that's fine. On this, 
the battery normally sits right here, but I've been able to customize it and move it down here to where normally you'd run like a rear engine set of headers right there. I've just moved the battery tray lower to lower the center of gravity. And if I get a shorty pack, I can move this down a little bit further and it still won't hit those links. Additionally, ACRC has their sway bars, which are one piece, so they can't come loose on you, which is very nice during events to not have to worry about that. And this truck also has a Vanquish Stage 1 kit and beef tubes in the axles, um, just to make it a little more sturdy. This truck could basically be a pro mod in 20 minutes if I changed out the motor. It's built up just as strong as my pro mod. I just race it in the sport modified class because I overbuild everything I have. Um, a few other things to consider in the sport modified and the retro class, we are limited to 2S 100C batteries. A lot of people use 25 or 50C batteries, but at 100C, you get a lot more burst of energy coming out of your battery. That's why our trucks look so fast, along with them being geared as high as they are. Um, as far as the engines, we're limited to 17 turn. There's a lot of companies that make them. Um, this one runs a Team Brood 17 turn motor. There's also uh, Reedy Radon, Hackmoto, Ghoul RC, and J Concepts, I guess, is making some 17 turn brush motors as well. This truck actually runs a 19 turn motor, which is a little more torque, a little less top end speed, but it's great for indoors where you don't have such long tracks and a little more acceleration out of turns. Uh, for servos, this truck currently has a Savix 1230 in it. I've previously ran a uh, Savix 1270, which is a little faster, and also a high tech 7954. Uh, both are high voltage servos. Nothing wrong with the other ones that weren't on it. I just stole it for a different truck that I'm building right now. And this one has a Power HD 23 kg servo. I've also used their 25 kg servos, and both of those are pretty durable. I've used the 20 kg servos that Power HD makes, and they're great on retros, but they don't take the abuse that the sport mod and pro modified classes ask for with that information out of the way i also posted on facebook earlier today asking if you guys had any questions about my trucks or the sport modified class in general here are a few of the questions i received one asked if i could compare a retro truck and a sport or pro modified truck side by side as you can see the retro truck on the left is about an inch taller and this wheelbase is around 11 and a half inch. Uh, stock clod buster is about 10 and a half inch. And some of our guys stretch them out to 12 and a half, but that's about as long as they go most of the time. Whereas on the right, the sport modified truck, that one is 13 and a half inch wheelbase. And most of them are between 12 and a half and 14 inches. And they're significantly lower, plus they run sway bars. So they handle significantly better with the lower center of gravity. I was also asked what post-season maintenance I do and any changes I make. Um, we generally don't have an off-season in Trigger King. We just have a summer and winter series. So most of my changes are with the tires. In the summertime on dirt, we run blue compound renegades for the Sport and Pro Modified trucks. These grip the dirt a little bit better than the golds do. In the winter time, we often race on polished concrete and the gold compound renegades are great on that. And they're also great on carpet, which a lot of guys race on as well. Um, additionally, you can make changes right here and right here on your truck. If you move these bars down, it makes your steering more aggressive. I usually leave that the same. Or you can move these bars up or down to improve some traction or tune out some traction on your truck depending on the grip surface. I don't mess around with that too much, but some guys are a little more technical than I am. Outside of that, I just perform general maintenance usually every month and then go through trucks nut and bolts 
making sure anything isn't bent or loose every couple of months or if there's a major wreck. Um, I was also asked about how I get the wheel wells more rounded and open on this snoop nose body. Um, they're larger like that out of necessity because the truck sits so much lower. It needs to fit the whole tire, whereas these trucks generally don't touch the body. If I don't trim these out and I turn, it'll hit the tires or scrape the body and I don't wanna do that. So what I do is I make a stencil, usually off one of these fronts, and then I trace it through the body while it's still clear and then I copy it to the rear and to the other side. That way they're pretty consistent and it fits the tires. Sometimes I do a little less or more depending how low the truck sits. On the Buffalo Tremor body, this is actually the same body as the Retro is running, but it's running a 13 inch wheelbase chassis instead of 11 and a half. So I trimmed off the front bumper so it doesn't look as out of place as this truck would if the bumper was still on it. Plus, this truck didn't have a bumper to begin with, so it made it really easy to modify it. I was also asked about steering and suspension mods and setups, or chassis mods and ride height. Most of that was covered already earlier in the video. I will say for parts and durability, um, on the Pro Modified trucks, you'd normally run beef tubes in the axles, or you upgrade to uh, metal or metal alloy axles made by Vanquish, uh, the SSD diamond axles or extra speed housings. And those make the axles more durable. Uh, you can also go to metal knuckles and C hubs and lockouts, which are on this truck and also my pro modified truck just to make them more durable. Vanquish stage one kits, uh, scale knuckles, uh, SSD, hot racing, all make pretty good stuff. Um, I also use Axial Universal axles for the front. They're about $40. The Vanquish alternatives are between $90 and $150, and they're not as durable, so I like the Axial Universal front axles. And then the metal links and the wheelie bars that I showed earlier are also great upgrades. Um, I also didn't mention this before, J Concepts makes bump stops or you could use fuel tube or something to limit the upstroke of your shocks. But I have them here just so the axles don't hit the chassis. And I also use them on my retro truck so these vertical servos don't hit the chassis until J Concepts releases their behind the axle steering kits. Then I can get the full shock movement on my retro trucks as well. Uh, outside of that, I was also asked um, the shock setups, I did that already, and some tires. In addition to the different compounds, a lot of guys are running uh, Crawler Innovations Deuces Wild Foams. Instead of the hard foams that come with the tires, you can see how these push down. There's actually an air gap in here that helps absorb the landing. And with the harder foam, it makes your shocks absorb the landing instead of your shocks and your tires and the trucks bouncing. So those are great. I think they're $20 a pair roughly. Um, those are a great upgrade for sport and pro modified trucks if you haven't done them already. I was also asked about how to glue tires. I don't use tire glue because I wanna be able to remove them and change the rims or different things like that. I use E6000, some people use Shugu as well. Uh, with, I have both of them here. With Shugu, you have this tube right here, but you have no tip for it to come out, so you have to smear it in with your fingers or squirt it in the edge. That's not very handy, it's messy. With E6000, this is a half used tube, but this black part comes out and there's a needle like you'd use to pump up like a football or a basketball. And then you have a more precise area. And all you have to do is pull back the edge of the tire, put the needle under the bead, 
and just squeeze a little bit in. And you don't even have to do all the way around the tire unless you're running 3S or something. You can just do like here and then another two spots down here just to get most of it so the tire doesn't spin. I've also been asked about dyeing rims since I dye the Buffalo Tremor rims and some others. Use Rit Dye. This is the liquid form. There's also a powder form. This is the yellow I used uh, for these rims and for these rims. I believe Doug Welker used it for one of his nuclear banana builds as well. Um, that pretty much wraps up my video. I'd also like to send a shout out to Dan Cheech Agosh from the Hall Brothers Racing Team who helped me get this Taurus team jersey right there. And uh, Chris Parrish from Mean Duck RC and Mean Duck Productions and the Monster Blog. He also races with us in Trigger King. He got this autographed poster from the Hall of Fame for me for the DVD. Uh, this truck was autographed by Jack Sr. right there. He also autographed that poster, my Taurus 1, because they were on display there, and this DVD. Uh, this is a great DVD. Um, that Chris helped make along with video from Jack Sr. And it's available on eBay and the Taurus RC Monster Truck History Face or the Taurus Monster Truck History Facebook page. A few things that I forgot earlier in the video. Both sport modified trucks run the Hobbywing 1080 speed control, which is nice because it's programmable. This allows you to adjust the throttle punch, the acceleration curve, the braking power to turn off the drag brake, among many other things. You can also have uh, internal BC for high voltage servos, so you can adjust between six and 7.4 volts, which most don't have, or you have to do an external castle BC. Also, the paint that goes on the Taurus trucks, everybody asks about, is Tamiya PS paint for Lexan bodies. We don't use spray paint, we use PS polycarbonate paint. It is Tamiya PS37 translucent red, backed by PS48 aluminum silver, backed by PS5 black, and then the yellow is PS6, and it's backed by PS1 white, which is also on there by itself. So it's a lot of colors that come together to make these bodies. The flags on the body as well are made by JB Scale Graphics. They do American flags, Trigger King flags, just about anything you guys could want if you're looking for scale flags. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope everybody out there is safe and healthy or on the road to recovery during this scary time. And we'll see you later on Trigger King Tech.